Merry Christmas, everybody. It's Festool Live, and this means it's Friday and it's at noon. And the Festool Live crew, including Spacky, wants to wish each and every one of you and your families a Merry, Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! It's a portable hand planer, power hand planer. Okay, and what I, I think is really neat about this tool is it takes the best of a regular hand plane. Okay, now as I go through this, I want you to understand why. Why would you actually investigate, if you don't own the tool, why would you put this into your arsenal? Okay, if you own a portable hand plane, you're going you're gonna to freak out on a couple things on this. And as I go through it, you'll see. And you're going to notice the in feet is short and the out feet is long. And there's a reason for that, okay? Um, I also want to point this out to you. On the cutter, it is a single aluminum billet. I'll take it apart in a little while, okay, so you can see the blade change. But it's a single blade, okay? But you're going to notice... It's, it's, it cuts with a shear cut. Let me explain a shear cut. I'm going to use a hand. I'm going to use this hand plane really quick. You know that if I take, if you've ever used a hand plane before, okay, my pressure's here in the beginning, and this is why the length here at the end, okay, so you can balance it and you don't get what is known as snipe, okay? Now, if I went straight on with this hand plane like this, you're going to get some hesitations, okay? But what if I take the hand plane like this, watch, and I tilt at the blade, I create what is known as a shearing cut, okay? And it's a lot easier. We automatically incorporate that into the blade on the HL850, okay? So when I saw that, I went, now we're talking, okay? Somebody at Festool and engineering, engineering is really thinking through this tool. I will explain blade changing. I'll explain that this is solid carbide. The blade is balanced to the single aluminum billet. So <coughs> the other thing you're going to notice when I turn this on in a couple of minutes, it's wicked quiet. Okay, listen to this. Look. Oh, first I got to plug it in. You'll want to use a 36 millimeter. I'm going to use the one that comes with the CT48AC, the new one. And the reason I'm going to do that is because it's a conical hose. Now watch. See this right here? The 36 goes on the inside. Now, the reason you want that is because you're going to make a lot of chip quick. All right? You stand a chance of clogging. Now, somebody will ask, okay, and this is a question I know I'll probably get, can I use the 27 millimeter hose? Yes, you can. Okay? But remember, you're going to have to take lighter cuts with it because you don't want to clog it. Now, on the 27 millimeter hose, you're going to notice that there's this little ridge right here. See it? Okay. What that's for is for the HL850. Because when you put it in here, there's actually a ribbon there that holds it in. So you can use a 27, but I will always tell you, if you're going to use it extensively and you want to take deep cuts, use it with a 36 millimeter hose. Hose on. But listen. So you hear this? Okay. Hope you can hear that. Okay. I can actually talk over it because the decibel rating on this is only 76 decibels. The average human voice is average is 80 decibels. How I many think decibels is yours? I think I've been clocked in at 250. That sounds about right. All right. Woo! Okay. So, like a typical hand plane, look what my pressure is in the front here. Okay. And I'm just going to take a, a slight, a slight cut with this. Okay. <clears throat> my pressure. Oh, let, let's do this. Let's talk about depth setting first. I'm going to take it. See where it says pack. Okay, and then you have, you know what? Let's see if we can get a zoom on this. Okay, can you get right in there on that? Is that better? See where it says pack? Okay, it's adjustable on the fly. That's zero. That means I'm completely uh, level. And then you can take all the way up to an eighth of an inch cut in a single pass. I'm going to put it at 1 16th. There's your cursor right there. You getting that big D? Perfect. Here's your lock on. Okay, so... I'm going to take it like this. I'll put my front shoe on here like this, and I'll just make a quick pass. Okay? My pressure's right here. And then as I get to the end, 
the pressure is right here at the end. Follow? So there you go. There we go. So what I'm going to do is what's the first thing you do to a piece of 4 by 8 piece of plywood? Woo! A lot of people don't know this. You have to clean up the factory edge. It's not squaring it. It's getting a straight line rip. The Festool system is great for that. Now, a couple of questions we get over the years is, hey, how much do I take off of that rip? And I've seen this a lot. And Derek, maybe you can get this on the Zoom right here. See this right here? I see a lot of people take that splinter guard and put it right there. You've already cut the splinter guard. We've covered that in other tracks or essentials, okay? But you're not going to get good dust extraction. So I used to tell everybody, look, do it, put a little right there, okay? Line it up there, and then come down here and line it up here. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I saw my buddy Marvin do this. The guy's unbelievable, okay? Marvin, I hope you're watching. Marvin Martin, okay? He took out this. I saw him in a, tra uh, in a training class. He took out this. This is the limit stop, okay? But I saw him do this, and I, and I started laughing because I go, oh, my God, Martin, is that a great idea? And this is what I love about Martin. I go, Martin, is that your idea? And he goes, he started to nod his head yes a little bit, and then he said, nah, I saw it on the Festool Owners Group. So whoever thought this up, and this is, look, look how I do this. That's an exact six millimeter rip because you have that little offset on the limit stop. And as you can see, there's little or no dust. So now, and by the way, whether you, I'm using a table saw, a panel saw, or a track saw, you always, with a 4 by 8 cheap piece of plywood, have to clean up that edge. Okay, so there's the first thing we have to do. Now, when you look at these, there's, oh, where do I get started with these? <laughs> They're pretty simple. You have a scale here, okay? You have this channel here, and you see this? This is an eccentric cam. This links to this. This here is a T-nut, okay? Now, automatically I hear the, I know the question's coming in. Oh my God, look at this. This is metric. I don't use metric. It doesn't matter. Hopefully we can get this on here. I'm gonna take this up. There's two versions. You can also get them now in Imperial. Uh, yeah, Imperial, that's the right way of saying that, okay? So there you go. Now. <coughs> if you don't have these, I'm going to coach you a little. These are the parallel guides. Look, these two long extrusions and these two pieces here, these are your reference points, okay? These here are the extensions. So if you, if you go somewhere and you look and these come in a small box, these come in a long box. If you're going to purchase these, and when I, t when I used to have training classes here, uh, everybody would go, oh, I wish I had known that. Buy it as a set, you save quite a bit of coin doing that, okay? See the scale? This always goes to the board, okay? You'll see this. Now, when you set these up, it takes a little getting used to, but make sure everything is loose when you set it on the rail. That way there, you, in other words, in, in the early days when I was setting these up, I used to fumble a little. So. I'm going to see if you can come over here, Chris, to get this. I know Derek's going to zoom in here in a minute. But as I put this on, you see this T-nut? And this is loose underneath. I'm going to pick it up and slide it in. Okay? And what I'll do is I'll flip it back over here. And you could probably zoom in on this, right, D? As I lock it down, I lock it here. And as I flip it back, then I tighten this big green um, dial or knob, whatever you want to call it. I always go like this because sometimes it holds up on that outside rip. Okay, see that? See how I have it tight? Okay, I'm going to show you all the mistakes I made in the early days. Okay, the next one I'm going to put on is pretty simple. I'm going to open it up all the way. I'll do the exact same thing. I'll put it on the outside rib here. I'll lift it up and slide it in. Now, here's the big mistake I used to make. I used to put it tight on that end and tight on this end. That's a big no-no because you'll get really frustrated after you make the rip trying to, there'll be too much racking on this system. So what you want to do, and I always tell everybody, I used to go, hey, put a finger space between each side. I just do this. I put two fingers like this, or you can take this edge and line it up here. That way there, and I'm going to flip it back like this so you can see it. I'm going to lock it back again, okay, just like that, and I'm going to tighten this. Now, I want to talk about a little bit of calibration. Okay, now look, see this? Now I have a finger on either side, okay? Now, a little bit of calibration. You'll see this. Okay, and sometimes it's too loose, or sometimes it's really tight. It's an eccentric cam. If we look right here, see this? What uh, camera am I on? Up top? Oh, Chris's. See that? That's a little two millimeter hex. 
And in the beginning, some, mine used to be too tight. So what I do is that's the, that is the adjustment right there. So you can do, and it's like eighth inch or sixteenth turns. Now, also important on that, in saying that, is, <coughs> and the reason I'm telling you this, is you see this, you never loosen that nut. There's only about four or five threads on there, and if you loosen it to get calibration on there, or how do you say, adjustment, you'll lose that nut and sawdust in a heartbeat. So I'm going to just take that out there. I'm going to tighten it up. It's the right. So your calibration is that two millimeter hex screw. Hopefully that came out clearly. So both of these drill into concrete. Okay, now I will ask everybody when we talk about the PDC, how often do you drill into concrete? <laughs> And that is the simplest. If you need a specific, hey, I just gonna drill into concrete, or okay, that would be the BHC. If you want a multi-purpose drill that is a hammer drill, then I would put you in a PDC because that's a wood, steel, and concrete. But I'm gonna step you through so you understand this. An impact driver, okay, here's the TID 18, okay, is a, and let's just pretend this is the part that is the gear that's drilling, okay? And what happens is a series of cogs come on and it doesn't hit it directly, it hits it and turns it, hits it and turns it. So the best description I can do is it's a tangential force and say I'm impacting this lag bolt, the torque is as it's drilling, is hitting it from the side. Hopefully that describes that. Now, let's get rid of the impact because we're talking about hammer drills today or rotary hammers. Okay, let's put this off to the side and let's talk about the PDC. Now the PDC, and hopefully we can come in here and get this right here. You have two modes. You have drilling, okay, and you see the hammer? There's your hammer. Okay, now I'm going to put it in four just so, and I'll describe all the different settings on here. But I'm going to put in a concrete bit. Now, see how it's just drilling? But when I put it to concrete, listen, and and hopefully we can see this too. Look how I can push it now, okay? Okay, so what's happening? This, is, this bit has got carbide tipped. This is the PDC, okay? And I switch it to hammer. Here's the drill mode. We got that? Is that looking good? Okay. Now, when I switch it to hammer mode, and if we can look inside, and I'm just going to take my pencil to point to it. You see these three cogs right here? Those slip back and hit these gears right here, and that's what's vibrating it, okay, to the tip right here, okay? And that's what you hear, and that allows that bit. Now, if I put it in drill mode, listen, nothing's going to happen. I have to vibrate that tip. That's what we call a hammer drill. A rotary hammer, and I'm going to put that bit, and this is an SDS hammer. SDS stands for slot drive system. When you put the bit in, you just take it, stick it in, turn it until it finds its equilibrium, and there you go. Now, when you hear this, okay, it's a more positive drive. It's not vibrating. What's happening, and the best way I can describe this, is here's my drill bit that's spinning, and there's a piston going like this. Okay, and hitting that drill bit in. And Rick, that's why I have that spike you gave me. <laughs> Rick was in here today asking, what's that for? Everybody following so far? Okay, so that's the difference between impact, hammer drill, and rotary hammer. That, oh, if you're drilling the concrete all day, there's a lot of backwards vibration to you as you're hammering. This has a buffer zone, as you can see it. Actually, this is a pretty good <laughs> workout. Hey, Mo! Okay? You have a handle and you have a depth stop. All right? But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you a tap con because I was uh, or setting a tap con. I got the bit in there. And the other thing I want to show you is this. This is an adapter. Okay? It's got this slot drive system and it's got this stub. You all know what this stub is. The Central Tech Fast Fix goes right on there. So if I set that up, and I have this on my pocket or my uh, bag or my belt, I can put a Central Tech bit holder with a uh, Tapcon bit or hex, so I can, hit, I can set Tapcons all day long. Now, as I set this up, I want to point one thing out. 
What's the one thing you do when you are working into concrete? Okay, if you drill, you have to have what? Uh, uh, some air to blow out the hole, especially like if I'm using a redhead. Okay, you have to uh, suck the dust out. And that's what's really nice about the CT48 AutoClean. I got it hooked up with um, the uh, hose. And I want to point this out. This is, this is our dust shroud. Okay, and as I set it up, I want you to see the flat right here. If you are working overhead, you can actually pipe right in overhead like this, okay, or directly in line. So I'm going to go directly in line. And with the CT48, it comes with a 32 to 36 millimeter hose. You can actually put the adapter in there. So now it's working like a champ, and don't forget Bluetooth. Now I'm just going to set it down on there. See how you can do that? Or if I'm working on the side like that, okay? So I'm just going to take this so we can see it. I'm going to take the BHC. I'm just going to drill in. I can set the depth precisely where I want it, but I'm not going to do it today with this. And I'm just going to... And you're going to see how quick it is. And I'm getting... I'm getting no vibration on this. So I can take that, and that gets all the dust out of there. So if I'm up hanging a, a shutter, I can just take it like this, and just take this now, okay, and just feed it in, rotate it in so it hits. I just got to find its equilibrium. There we go. And I can take my Tapcon and set my Tapcon just like this. Oh. I would probably put it in drill mode. Whoopsie! There's one today, right? So there you go. Okay, so it's easy to set tap cons with this. Now, can I do that with the PDC? Absolutely. But this is all, an all-day concrete drill, whether drilling or hammering or rotary hammer. This right here is the DTS, or d I got to... Don't quote me on models, but this is the DT. I gotta read it. DTSC, okay, 400. It, in other words, we have a corded version of it right here. And by the way, that's my second favorite Santa. This is my second favorite Santa. The RTSC 400, and our five-inch random orbit Santa, the ETSC 125. Okay, there's three choices. Now, Chris and I were talking at the beginning here, and he said, Sedge, you ought to show people the difference between orbital and random orbit. So hopefully we get the overhead here, and whenever I talk about Sanders, I'm always talking about the differences between the orbits, whether it's orbital, random orbit, rotex, linear, or rotary. But most of you out there have always used a quarter sheet sander, right? Okay, that's an orbital sander. You know that. It's a vibrating sander, okay? It's not that aggressive. It's more of a, a finish sander, okay? And it's making an orbit like this. Now, a random orbit is doing this same motion, but it's also spinning with a counterweight, okay? And it's more aggressive, okay? So hopefully you understand that. These two, the DTS, and the RTS are orbital sanders. They're less aggressive. Hopefully you understand that. And then I made these marks on here, so we'll sand those off in a few minutes. And it's the same on these batteries as well. When I hit the button, if you see three bars, that means it's 70 to 100% of charge. If it's two bars, then it's uh, 40 to 70%. If it's one bar, then it's 15 to 40%. And if it's blinking one bar, Get it on the charger because it's 0 to 15% of charge. And that's really important because when you're up on a ladder and look, when you're up on a ladder and you're sanding, okay, look at the freedom you get with this. Okay, but you know that if it was one bar, you'd probably pull another battery with you or change the battery off of the charger, right? Okay, and you get tons of freedom up here to sand. Okay, so that's why cordless and say you're going out on a job site and you don't want to bring a dust extractor, okay? And this is where I'm going to talk about the bag. We call it a turbo bag. Now, 
you can hook and come in here so you can see this. Oh, maybe we can get an overhead here. I'm going to pull the bag. You see these two tabs? There's one here and one here. And as I press it, watch. Yes, you can hook it up to a dust extractor. Okay, this is very important. Now, if you've ever used another system <coughs> that utilizes a canister or a bag, you're like, well, nothing really ever goes in them. Check this out. This is super duper efficient. There's a little tab here, and I'm going to empty it. Whoopsie, the other way. See the little tab here? As I pull it, I'm going to empty some dust out here. Okay? I'm going to snap it back. And that's how you empty it, by the way. And then when I put this back on here, and we were doing some shooting earlier because I wanted you to see this. I want you to notice the holes here on the pad, okay, but on the side of the pad. And as I turn this on, check this out. Look how that just sucks up all that dust right back in the bag. See that? And now I can go to sanding just like this. So it's actually, and by the way, we better be good at it. We're known for our dust extraction. It is a super efficient turbo bag. So think about the freedom you have now. You've got killer dust extraction, okay, and no cord with a Bluetooth battery. And if you want to hook it up to a uh, dust extractor, you can when you're in the shop. This is the CXS, and this is the TXS. Uh, do we have any questions? I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, they want to know what the C and the T stand okay. for. Okay. I'm joking. So, which one do I reach for, or which one do I see people reach for? It's all about comfort level, okay? They're identical, everybody, okay, when you look at the CXS and TXS. The only thing is, is this is the T format, Okay, and this is the C format. And notice how I, I grab it, okay? I've talked about this with our C18 and T18 easy and T18 plus three, okay? It's how, well, think about it. And just hear me out on this one. Have you ever used a corded drill, right? Have you ever seen a corded drill that's a T style? No. Well, there were early on, but they kind of went away, all right? <coughs> It's because this is how you hold a drill. Say you're up on a ladder, okay, or you're drilling in the side, you're right behind that push like this in. Where a T-drill, yes, it's very comfortable, okay, but it kind of, if you need to get any power to it, you got to push behind, okay? So I automatically go for a C. Um, it's just comfortable. I tell everybody, try it. You'll like it. <laughs> All right, now. I'm going to go through a few things with you. I'm going to go through with some battery technology, but I'm also going to go through Centro Tech with you and describe it. Okay, first off, I want to show you this. All our drills, impacts, whatever, have a magnetic uh, bit storage, okay? On the TXS, it's right here. It's magnetic. It's right there where you need it. Also, you'll see the lights, okay? And that shines right up on the tip. But what's really nice about this is you can actually cycle on the light when you're working inside a cabinet, okay? And the bit doesn't, or the uh, drill doesn't have to be spinning. Now, the other thing I want to uh, get and show you is when I cycle this on, you're going to see right here. See how it just cycled? Those are three bars. Three bars means that it's okay. 70 to 100%, okay? Just like this. Look, if it's two bars, then that means it's 40 to 70%. If it's one bar, okay, that's not blinking, okay, it's 15 to 40%. And if it's blinking, it's 0 to 15%. That means take the battery off and put it on the, on the charger. And here's the charger that you get with your CXS or TXS. And it just snaps in just like that. So I'm going to set it at 1. And you're going to see as I drive this screw, okay, see that? Okay, I've reached that point. So the higher you go up, and I can, I can set this, see right there, and if I want to go a little bit further, I can get it just below there, okay, and hit that. Now, if I want to go and drill something, I'll switch it to drill, and that central tech, you guys all know all the different bit tips we make for it, like this Brad Point bit right here. Now, I'm going slow and I want to go a little bit faster, okay? So remember this, the RPM on this is 1300 RPM. I've said this before in all the other videos we've done, all the lives, the faster you go, the less torque you have. But running this Brad Point bit, I think this is a, a 3 eighths, 
okay? I don't need, I don't need a, a lot of torque on that. Now, if I'm running a bigger bit, okay, and it, I would switch it to one, and I believe that goes down to 450, okay? Let me just check. I always forget. Yeah, 450, 430 RPM. Okay, so remember, lower, uh, lower RPM, 